Your sins are forgiven, my son. I thought only God could do that. Which is easier, to say his sins are forgiven, or say he get up and walk? I've had reports of a young prophet of Nazareth. It's rumored he works miracles. They all do. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Pray to him, and he will listen. 5,000 came to see him. 5,000. If you hunger for righteousness, you will be filled through me. Who knows what Pilate will do if the crowds run out of control? That man, Judas, he wants to help us. I will crush any rebellion. Save us from the Romans, Lord! Obviously, the miniseries was an enormous success. I mean, that's an understatement. At what point did you decide as a producer and as a producer to try to do a movie version to bring this to the big screen, or was that the goal all along? No, it wasn't the goal all along. It was in the first few weeks of filming in Morocco and seeing Diogo on the screen and realizing how great it was. Roma said to me, you know what? We should have made a big feature film. This is so good. And after some discussion, we said, okay, we had no clue if we'd ever get it released. We knew we'd put it in a couple of theaters ourselves. We could do that. Right. But a real release, after 12 months of editing and 30 versions, we end up with this beautiful two hour movie and 20th Century Fox put it out on 3,000 screens. It's amazing. So it was your idea. You take the credit. <laughs> well, you know, it's it deserves a standalone experience. Um, the Jesus narrative is so strong, and he hasn't been on the big screen in 10 years since Passion of the Christ, almost 50 years since Greatest Story Ever Told. So there's a whole generation also of kids who've never seen the story brought to life on the screen. And, and the movie is beautiful. It's epic and sweeping and cinematic on the one hand, and yet it's this deeply personal, emotional love story on the other. And, you know, it's, we're, we couldn't be more excited that it's coming out on February 28th. Tell me about retooling it for the big screen. What did you have to cut? Were there any reshoots? What did you make sure you wanted to have in and what did you need to take out? You know, we had so many different ways of approaching it. Honestly, I feel like there were 30 versions uh, over 12 months. In the end, we knew we wanted to start uh, at Revelation with John on Patmos and end at Revelation with John on Patmos and then we needed to get to know and fall in love with Jesus, portrayed beautifully by Diogo Morgado. Um, and of course, we know that the arrest, trial, crucifixion, followed by the resurrection and the ascension. So it's this sweeping epic. And it was a matter of like, trying to, we couldn't fit it all in, right. but we wanted to, there's certain things you know. You know you got the Last Supper. You know you got the crucifixion. Walking on water. The raising of Lazarus. Feed the 5,000. There's certain things that they need to be there. Nativity. And yeah. then it just flows but along. But you know, but also it was our job to create the drama in the film. You know, to make it compelling and engaging. And so there's a three-pointed uh, uh, thriller occurring. You know, you have the Ro occupying Romans fiercely led by Pontius Pilate. You have the, the Jewish authorities led by Caiaphas and the disciples led by Jesus. And they're all on this collision point in Jerusalem right before Passover, which creates this ticking clock because it's all boiling into Passover. And then it explodes into this, this amazing story. And so, you know, I think it, those were the key elements that we knew we had to layer in there. And then you add to that this amazing Hans Zimmer score and this beautiful central performance by Diogo. And, and the movie really is epic. It's, uh, you know, I think we will be long gone. We will be distant memory in the eyes of grandchildren that I hope we have one day. And Son of God will still be touching people's lives. How did it feel to film the crucifixion scene, I must have been very daunting. It was actually the second thing that it, it crossed my mind as soon as I knew that I got the, 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 the part. So the first one was to be obviously really happy and uh, thrilled by, and the second one was like, I actually gonna do it. It's gonna be uh, crushing, it's gonna be hard, it's gonna be tough, and it's gonna be, it's gonna be meaningful for a lot, a lot, a lot of people, like Roma said, for generations to come. So it, it was daunting, but it was, at the same time, is that fear that pulls you forward, you know, so 
is that thing that you, you really want to because you know that it was the moment that changed everything. So uh, it was based on that that you just emerged yourself of, of you just be available to be, you know, a vessel of, of whatever you, you're telling. I mean, come on, the Bible and, and the story of Jesus, it's the most beautiful story ever. So it's the, as an actor, it's the best script you can get. So I was, I was so happy. I was really happy. We must arrest this false prophet. But what if he is who they say he is? Will somebody tell me? Peter, come. Answer if you can. One of you here will betray me to my enemies. I want someone to tell me what is the soul of a man. Jesus of Nazareth. You are charged with blasphemy. He has employed demons to heal. He threatened to destroy the temple. Tell us, are you the son of God? 